My name is Brittany Helm. I'm 32 years old. I have cystic sclerosis, also known as scleroderma. It was like this disease that you never heard of, and then when you do hear of it, what you find out is you have a prog prognosis of five to seven years. You can see it on my fingertips. It becomes, they hurt. So when you touch them, it feels like calloused, but broken open calluses. And my hands don't heal. Um, like I have a little bit of a, it looks like a cut here. It's been here for probably over a month and it'll take forever to heal. And that's the fear is that with scleroderma, it clenches you up like stone. If this continues and I don't do anything about it, it could chop off my fingers. But in my case, it's my internal organs also. My lungs are at only 48% and that's wavering between 41% to 48 on a good day. You don't have a choice which way you go. So you can go into this and get radiation and die. You go in this and get stem cell transplant and die. Uh, all of it, the probability of dying was so high that that's why I chose to medicate. Um, and when I say medicate, taking immune suppressants to stop my immune system from attacking my body. The disease itself almost in some ways is a little bit deceptive. Initially, I didn't see a lot of, um, you know, I felt like Brittany was still kind of the same old girl. You know, I don't know if that was her hiding it inside. I would see smiles. I didn't tell anyone what I was feeling, um, but my skin was getting really hard and everything was becoming more difficult. Um, I remember walking just from my office building to the car, how hard that was to do. And it just, I wouldn't tell anyone. Um, I thought, it's just gonna go away, it's no big deal, whatever. When you come from knowing Brittany as this adventurous person that's always looking for the next activity to do, always looking for the next adventure, you know, and just hearing that she was somebody that now would get tired out easy, that, you know, mentally it was starting to take its toll on her, that it was changing her life, you know, it just, in a lot of ways, it wasn't the same Brittany. You know, a lot of times I still see that smile on Brittany, but sometimes I wonder now what is behind that smile. Being married, freshly being married, first thing I did was pretty much write my funeral out in my journal. Um, you know, I felt terrible for my husband. You know, he married a person that is gonna, that's gonna, could die soon. It put a lot of tension on a relationship. Um, I didn't know how to react to all of it. And I'm, I know he didn't either. Not only am I fighting the disease, but I'm fighting to keep my marriage together. I'm fighting for the sanity um, of keeping my family together. She's got a pretty big wall. Um, she doesn't like to show her true emotions right now, and she doesn't want people to feel sorry for her. She's a strong, strong person, you know, but she's breakable. And right now she's, she's breaking down. And, you know, with her disease and everything else going on in her life, she needs help. My lungs actually decre decreased in their capacity. And that's when we realized this is serious, real serious. I came to the conclusion that I can't sit here and take drugs for the next three, four years and then die. I was kind of in denial and didn't have it. It didn't, it wasn't real until she brought up the word stem cell transplant. And that's when I, I knew for Brittany, this was, this was it. I heard of one person that had it done and they're back at work, they're living their life and it's totally changed their entire life. Um, she still has crippling in her hands, but it's, she can still move them and she still has flexibility and it's just, she can live. She has a hope. And that was the choice I decided to pursue.
is I'm going for a stem cell transplant. I'm not gonna let this disease kill me. I'm gonna fight 